Right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to members of the committee to the 20th meeting in 2018 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Uh, we are lacking one of our members at the moment, but I'm sure she's on her way, so I think we can get underway. Um, agenda item one, then, is business in private, and uh, the first item today is for the committee to agree to take item four on your agenda in private, and this item relates to correspondence received on acting conveners. Do members agree to take this item in private? Agreed, agreed. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so agenda item two. And agenda item two <coughs> is uh, for the committee to consider an application for recognition uh, from one proposed cross-party group. The group we have to consider today is the proposed CPG on Japan. And I'd like to welcome Dean Lockhart, MSP, to the meeting. Uh, Dean would be the convener of the proposed group. And I would like to invite uh, Dean Lockhart, MSP, to make an opening statement about the purpose of the group, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, convener, and good morning, everyone. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to appear uh, before the committee this morning. The proposed cross-party group uh, on Japan can make a, an important contribution in a number of areas. By way of background, uh, Scotland continues to see increasing links with Japan in a number of areas, including trade, foreign direct investment, education, culture and sports. Um, in terms of trade, Japan is a major export market for Scotland and is the fourth largest uh, investor into Scotland. There are op opportunities for uh, Scottish business in a number of sectors to increase uh, trade with Japan. In education, we're seeing an increasing number of Japanese students coming to uh, uh, educational establishments in Scotland, uh, school, high, sc uh, high school as well as higher education. And in terms of culture and sport, we're seeing uh, increasing ties between the countries. We've got the upcoming World Cup, uh, Rugby World Cup in Japan and the Olympics also hosted in Japan. So in terms of the role of the proposed cross-party group, we will look to work with uh, key stakeholders and organisations to uh, promote all of those uh, links and to promote with, within Parliament a better understanding of the links between the two countries. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dean. Um, okay, can we have any questions from members? Uh, first one from Gil and then from Elaine, please, and then Tom. Yeah, uh, Dean, um, just for information, is this the first cross party group in Japan? It's set up in the Scottish Parliament? No, it's not. I understand yeah. previously, in previous sessions of the Parliament, there have been cross-party groups uh, yeah. on Japan. So, in a sense, this is uh, a proposal to reintroduce right. the cross-party group uh, yeah. on Japan. I'm surprised if, if maybe you could enlighten us why, uh, why it didn't maintain itself, because not only you've, you've described exactly where we are at the present time, uh, and I concur with what, what you've said about uh, the, the importance of a good connection between Japan and Scotland. Uh, and, of course, in the past, Scotland's uh, the, the relationship with Japan in, in, in the past, uh, right up until the Second World War, war was very, very close. And both, a lot of Scots have been involved, including uh, it was a lady from Kirkintilloch that uh, brought uh, Santori to, to Japan. And, some of the big conglomerates had Scottish connections, so I'm kind of surprised. I, 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 I very much support what you're doing, I should say, but I'm surprised that it kind of fell away uh, in the first place. So maybe you could, not it's your responsibility, but it would be any understanding why that was the case. I, I think it was a situation where um, the different members who were involved previously um, uh, weren't, were not able to take, take it forward. And so uh, I think I agree with you that there's a real need to uh, increase and look at these ties. So that, that's um, something that I begin to do moving forward. OK, thanks for that. Well, thank you very much, Gil. Can I, just before Elaine comes in, uh, just welcome... Uh, member of the group Maureen, uh, sorry Maureen, uh, Maureen Watt has arrived and just to let Maureen know that we're, uh, we're on the uh, item uh, right at the beginning basically uh, to talk about the cross-party group in Japan so just so you're up to speed there. That's right, well, thank you for that and oh, right. <laughs> right. Elaine please, thank you. Thanks very much convener um, and thanks for coming along this morning to Dean Locker. I don't, certainly don't have any objection at all to a cross-party group on Japan, although we do have quite a number of cross-party groups. It's probably getting to the point when I'm wondering how members are going to be able to be covering them all. But it does seem that, that um, what the members outlined, uh, that, that there is a reason and a purpose for having this cross-party group. 
What I'm interested in, though, is um, the very name Cross Party Group. It usually does indicate that the office bearers would be from different parties, but you're proposing that your office bearers are the convener and deputy convener, and they're both from the Conservative Party. Is I, I think I, that may happen in other cross party groups. I, I don't know of it. I think that's a bit unusual. Is that something that you've thought about? It's a good question. It's, it's certainly not by design. I think it's frankly a function of uh, this cross party group being established quite a bit later on uh, in, in the term and there being a lot of other commitments that other MSPs have. So I don't think that was uh, something we intentionally set out to do and I'm very happy as and when it, it, you know, if and when the group gets up and established, I'm very happy to have an another look at that uh, and also increase uh, uh, the participation of other parties in, in the group going forward. Okay. Uh, thank you. And just for clarification, and that's a good point, Elaine, thank you very much. Um, there are other uh, cross-party groups of similar um, circumstance, um, and it's not in the code, so it's allowed, actually. But it's a very good point, because I hadn't actually thought about it at all. But thank you. A and Tom, please. Thank you. Yes, um, welcome. Um, what is the knowledge with, you know, with the group so far of, of J uh, Japanese language? And is, uh, is it intended that you travel out there during the various events that are take, be, beginning to take place between ourselves and, J and Japan? Um, we would certainly no plans for, for any travel. Uh, the group is strongly supported by a number of stakeholders, including the Asia Scotland Institute, uh, which is a leading organisation in Scotland with a, view, with a role of increasing links, not just with, the Japan, with Japan, but with, with Asia generally. And the Secretariat is supported by David Burrell, who is the Chief Executive of Asia Scotland. So I think we've got a strong base there. Uh, I personally uh, speak a little Japanese. I, I worked in Tokyo for two years, so I've got a bit of experience uh, myself, but I, I won't try to speak Japanese this morning. That you were only supposed to be there for a year, but couldn't find your way out, not reading the signs and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Dean. Uh, okay, uh, well, thank you very much. Any other questions at all? Uh, okay, and uh, we'd well, like to thank Dean for your attendance, actually. And um, we'll, the committee will consider um, uh, to approve the application for recognition, and uh, we'll inform you thereafter of our decision. Thank Thanks. you very much, Gideon. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Okay. So, and the next item, as you will see on your sheet there, is agenda item three, and that is approval of cross-party group on Japan. And um, can I invite comments from members, please? Yes, Elaine. You know, just in um, terms of what I was asking previously, I do think it would be good practice for cross-party <coughs> groups to try and have office bearers from different parties. So it's maybe something... Um, it might not be in the codes, but perhaps it's something that we should be trying to encourage. Mm -hmm. okay. But, however, I don't have an objection to um, this group forming. Sure. Okay. Um, and Gil? Well, I know we're here to really look at the mechanisms, and you know, it's quite a technical aspect, that, as far as I'm concerned, that, that, that we should get engaged in. But having said that, I think there is. Uh, I think it's a good. Idea. It's a, a, a cross-party group that would be a benefit. To, to, to Scotland and, uh, and the UK, in, in fact, uh, and I think the fact that we don't have one is quite surprising to me. And I think there's uh, great opportunities uh, 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 in all, all sorts of ways, art and commerce, uh, industry, so uh, so I very much support it, I think, so I, I, I commit it will be well, uh, you know, uh, you know, it will bring some uh, some something back from what they do. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. Go, uh, Tom Mason and then Maureen Watt, please. Thanks. Yes, no, I am fully supportive of this, but my own, only concern going forward is, is just how many cross-party groups we're actually generating. Okay, exactly. um, I've been, I think we've approved every, one every time I've sat on this committee so far. <laughs> Um, and it, it's, it's coming to the point where we can, MSPs are being pretty thin on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I think we should look at that in the not-too-distant future. OK, I, th I think that's a reasonable thing to say. Thank you, Tom. And Maureen, please. Yeah, apologies again for being late, uh, Convener. Um, I'm very supportive of this group being set up. Um, we had one previously, and it was very much the baby of um, the late Alec Johnson. And I don't know if that's been said before, but, um, you know, I, it was a shame that it um, fell into abeyance, and I think... 
um, it being resurrected and formed again is really um, would be a testament to him. I think that's a, very much drove it a good thing to say, yeah. I think that's a very good point to raise, actually, and I think it um, should be as it is on the record anyway. I think that's really that's really nice. Um, okay, I think that there's any any other points. Uh, two things uh, coming out of that. That well, three. One is that uh, there appears to be no one against uh, the establishment of this committee, um, cross party group on Japan. Other two elements. Uh, one. Um, was regarding the makeup of the membership, and I think we could maybe look into that further. Um, not in this particular instance, but in general. And uh, also, of course, the fact that, um, as Tom Mason has uh, referred to, and it's been referred to before by Tom and others, uh, that this would be up to about 106, I think, cross party groups, um, which is a lot. And we maybe do need to address that, that in some way and uh, come back to that at a future meeting uh, to talk about that. Does that seem reasonable, Tom? Yeah, but maybe the clerks can sort out an a, 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 a unsally paper to discuss on options for that. Okay. Yep. Um, well, that's good. And thanks because I've been informed that the CPG annual report will be coming up soon and okay. that will be an opportunity for us to have an input to that. That seems reasonable, yeah. I think, actually. Okay, um, so can uh, can we look at whether members agree to accord recognition to the proposed cross-party group on Japan? Agreed. And people do, and that means the members do, and that means that uh, that uh, cross-party group on Japan can be established, and that ends the public part of this meeting today. Thank you very much.